Hi, I'm Trish. Welcome to the Gig House Kitchen. Today we're going to make rough puff pastry and then use it to make some lovely Eccles cakes. So, let's get down to it. Now rough puff pastry is quite an easy pastry to make and it's a very easy pastry to handle. The main ingredients are 250 grams of bread flour, which is strong flour, a level teaspoon of salt, 150 grams of good quality butter, which I have cut up into cubes and frozen for 30 minutes before using them so that they are nice and hard, and 150 mils of chilled water, which has got a teaspoon of fresh lemon juice in. Now to make the pastry, you take your 250 grams of strong bread flour and you add in your teaspoon of salt. And then you take your 150 grams of semi-frozen butter and add it to the mixture and literally give it a little stir. You're going to roll this pastry out three times to get layers because it's a layered pastry and obviously it helps if the butter's quite hard because it will stand sort of rolling. What I'm going to do now is pour in the 150 mils of water and a teaspoon of lemon juice and I'm going to give it a stir. It needs all of the water which is why I haven't put a bit in and then stirred it and put a bit in. It may start off as a little bit wet and sticky but it's soon becomes quite an easy pastry to handle once you've rolled it out the first time. So the pastry's now come together and I'm going to put my knife down and just get up the last few bits of flour from the base of the bowl and then it's ready to put onto a work surface. I'm going to put some flour down and not waste any obviously and just form it into a block, a sort of rectangle really, a fat rectangle. And then I'm going to flour my rolling pin and I'm going to roll the pastry out and give it its first rolling. Now, as I've said, it needs three rollings in order to get the layers. So the first rolling might be a little bit hard to do, but it will get easier as you go. Now I'm keeping it squarish in that the sides need to be straight and I'm using my rolling pin to do that. Once I've got the width, which is about half my rolling pin, I'm going to turn it round, reflour. It's quite a sticky pastry to start with, so you might need a bit more flour than you would normally use on pastry. And then I'm going to roll out lengthwise. Now you can see the butter is there and it's trapping the air, or it will trap air when you fold it, which is why it needs to be quite hard. It's important that you work quite quickly because obviously the butter will melt, particularly in a hot kitchen. Right, I'm just going to put those out of the way. Now a sort of jerky movement's actually quite good. I seem to get a lot further with that rather than a sort of complete rolling movement. If it seems to be sticking a little bit, you just need to get your palette knife and flour it and then literally just put it underneath, taking care not to break up the pastry. Reflour and then put it back. Again, I'm just going to get it back into shape. I'm going to move it again. You can see it absorbs quite a lot of the flour. Also, if you've got bits of butter there, obviously a good idea to get rid of them because it will stick to the butter that's on the work surface. A bit more flour on. So what I've got there is half the width of my rolling pin and the length of my rolling pin. It doesn't matter if your rolling pin's bigger or smaller than mine, as long as it's in sort of proportion. The next bit is crucial to keeping the air in, or putting the air in actually. So the first thing I'm going to do is brush off any flour so that it sticks. And then I'm going to bring the bottom up a third and the top down. And then I'm going to take my rolling pin and actually squash it slightly. Take my rolling pin, to the other side and squash it slightly. So that's the first rolling. Traditionally, if you were in a catering setting, what you would do now is as it's your first rolling, is you would put a little dent in to show it's your first rolling. So 
what we're going to do now is get a plate which has been well floured and lift it very carefully on top. I'm just going to squeeze these ends too to keep the air in. Fold over the cling film so it's nice and tight so it doesn't dry out. And then this is going to go now in the fridge for 20 minutes. The pastry is now out of the fridge. It's had a good 20 minutes and I have cleared down my work surface with my palette knife and got rid of any bits of pastry or butter and I've cleaned my rolling pin as well. That's to give it a good chance so that it doesn't stick. I'm going to reflower, lift the pastry back onto my work surface and I'm going to give it a quarter turn and then I'm going to roll it out again exactly the same way as I did before. Now it should, you should find that it doesn't stick hardly as much. The butter's still quite nice and hard so that's making it sort of quite easy to uh, roll. It doesn't get sort of all liquidy and hard and sticky and hard to roll. Always make it nice and square because it'll be easier to roll and easier to fold. You might start to see some air bubbles because what you're trying to do with all of this is trap air into the pastry. Obviously, if you do a full rolling movement sort of like that, you'll just shoot all the air bubbles out from the bottom of the top. So this sort of jerky staccato action works really well. Now, if you were to make proper puff pastry, that requires seven rolls. So this easy rough puff is much better because obviously you only have to give it three. So again, nice and square, take off all the flour with your hand and then you take up the bottom third and pull down the top third. Flour the rolling pin and squash the ends to keep the air in. And that's going to go back on my plate and back in the fridge for another 20 minutes. Almost forgot, two dots onto our second roll. So I'm going to put that back in the fridge now for another 20 minutes, so I'll see you soon. So now I'm on to my final rolling. So again, I've given my pastry a quarter turn. I put it onto a well-floured work surface and I've cleaned my rolling pin and reflowered it, so I'm ready to go. So I'm going to start with my staccato sort of movements and it's about half the width, so I'm going to turn it round and start on the lengths. Now I can see by looking that this pastry is getting rather good now. It's uh, got lots of little air bubbles in it and it's handling very well. So I'm quite confident it's going to give us some very good Eccles cakes. You can see the third rolling is nice and quick. That's a nice shape. So again, brush off the flour, bring the bottom up and can you see it's not sticking anymore? And the top third down and then squeeze the edges to stop the air getting out. Three dents to show you if it's had its third rolling. Back on the floured plate and into the fridge. And this time it needs to go into the fridge for a good hour. It's not a difficult pastry. It's a little bit long to make with all the going in and out of the fridge. But it's one of those pastries where you could be doing something else at the same time. So, you know, bearing that in mind, the actual prep time isn't very long. It's just the chilling. So anyway, I'm going to put this now into the fridge for an hour and then I'll be ready to make my Eccles cake. While my rough puff pastry is having its final hour long chill in the fridge, I thought I'd show you how to make the filling. We have here the traditional ingredients for Lancashire Eccles cake. First of all, we have some butter. I've got 50 grams here, which I'm going to put in a pan. And then I've got the rind and the juice of a small orange, which I'm going to put in. 40 grams of soft brown sugar. And then the main ingredient, which is currants, good quality currants. These are Greek currants. This is 200 grams of currants. The original recipe says 150 grams of currants and 50 grams of mixed peel. But nobody in our family likes mixed peel, so I don't tend to put it in. So I've made it up to 200 grams of currants. So they go in. And then here we have our flavourings. So I have half a teaspoon of allspice, which is the Christmas spice. It's got all the uh, spices that you would normally use at Christmas, so it smells very Christmassy. 
and half a teaspoon of ground nutmeg, which again is traditional spice used in Eccles cakes. And then the piece de resistance, and by far my favourite ingredient, a tablespoon of spirit of some kind. Now I've got some dark rum, but you could use a tablespoon of brandy or even a tablespoon of whiskey, whichever you prefer, or whichever you've got in your cupboard. I have all three, but there you go. I'm going to mix that up. And then I'm going to put this on some heat and let the butter melt and let all the spices and the orange juice infuse the currants. And once I've done that, I'm going to put that into a bowl and let it stand for at least two hours so that the currants can absorb all the flavours and the liquid and make it and make them nice and plump. So anyway, I'm going to now go off and cook out the filling for a little while. So I'll see you soon. So now we're ready to make the Eccles cakes. I have here my filling, which has been chilling for about two hours. And as you can see, all the lovely dark rum and orange juice and butter has been absorbed by the currants, so it's now ready to use. I also have here my rough puff pastry, with, which has had its third rolling. So I'm going to flour my table and take off my pastry onto the, off the plate and onto the work surface, and I'm going to cut it in half. This half I'm going to put back on my plate and I'm going to use that for something else. I might make some more Eccles cakes tomorrow or I may use it for some sausage rolls or I might just freeze it but uh, that's ready to use on another day. Now why I made a double lot is because you have to roll it out three times so rather than making a small amount I always make double the amount so that I've got extra to do something else with. I'm going to flour the table as I said and then I'm going to roll my pastry very carefully because remember I don't want to get rid of the air bubbles. So the important thing is to get the pastry rolled out because it's well chilled. It's not rolling as smoothly as it could but it will soften up very quickly. So now I'm going to get my palette knife, flour it and I'm just going to score it first of all into nine. You can use the rolling pin as a guide and I am doing this without the aid of my glasses as I'm too vain to wear them on camera but I would guess that that's roughly right and I'm just going to roll out a little bit bigger each square. There we go. I have here some water and I'm going to dip my finger in the water and then just wet the edges. So there we go, we're going to put a nice big dollop of mixture into the middle. Now you need a good proportion of filling because otherwise they can be very dry. Um, we're going to draw up the pastry around the edges and make into a sort of little parcel, just like that. You can always put a bit of flour down if your fingers are a little bit wet from the water. And once you have your nice little parcel, you need to turn it over, a bit more flour down again, make it into a nice round and then flatten it with the palm of your hand. I can tell these are going to be good. And then with your rolling pin, very carefully roll them so you can see the currants coming through the pastry. And once you've done that, you put them onto your baking tray. Traditionally, an Eccles cake has three slits on it, just like that. So there you are. So I have here nine Eccles cakes which have been finished and now I'm going to put a glaze on them which again is very traditional. I have here some egg white. You could use water but I find egg white gives a better glaze and I'm just going to brush them with egg white. Once I've done that I'm going to sprinkle either with a spoon or I like to do with my fingers a little bit of sugar on the top. Now this is just caster sugar. I've got in here about two tablespoons, which should be plenty. These are going to go into quite a hot oven, which is 200 degrees centigrade and gas mark six. And they should take about 20, 25 minutes to bake. Sprinkle on the sugar. So there we have it. Traditional Eccles cakes made with homemade rough puff pastry. Thank you for joining us. If you enjoyed this video, please remember to like and subscribe. And if there are any recipes that you would like us to cook for you, please comment below. See you next time in the Gig House Kitchen. Goodbye.